All right, so how is everyone doing? And today we will continue with our lecture series on graduate starter pack with the focus on personal finance. All right, so this lecture three is titled Proven Art of Financial Ammo Deployment. Uh, sounds very bombastic. Uh, it simply means managing your financial resources well, managing your income well, and we're going to unpack this lecture in the following sequence. All right, so in the lecture two, we deal with the work aspect. All right, the working aspect. The first priority for you is to bring in income, all right? Bring in the money either through employment, which is the major method, or through other methods such as passive income. Uh, these are a little bit harder topics, uh, which we're going to cover in next time. Uh, maybe not for graduate, right? For this point of time. So after we address the work aspect in the last lecture, lecture two, today we're going to address the second aspect, which is the managing, spending, and also the saving money aspect. All right. So imagine yourself, you know, going to war, and nobody goes to war without uh, replenishing their ammo. All right, their weapon. All right, make sure that you have enough resources to survive. So the analogy is something like that. All right, if you are earning, let's say, two thousand per month, and you are spending three thousand per month, then this is what we call as living above your means. All right. So which brings to my first main point: the proven art throughout financial history. Avoid bankruptcy. The only proven art is to always ensure that you live below your means. All right. So just put it in a simpler terms. If you are earning three thousand, in other words, the maximum you can spend is three thousand. All right. So the equation here: income minus expenses, and the the rest of it will be your saving. All right, so it is important, all right, uh, even as you graduate and moving on in your first career or maybe your second career, strive, all right, try to save minimum three to six months of your living expenses in cash, all right. Keep it as a saving in your bank account. All right, so this may differ uh, across different people because of personal finance. Uh, for some of you, you might want to go. A little bit longer, for example, minimum six months to twelve months of your living expenses in the bank account. All right, just for rainy day purposes. All right, so you may be asking, uh, what if, all right, are uh, you you save more than that? Uh, uh, what you can do is that you can invest the money, uh, invest the rest of your money. That one we're going to cover in another session. All right. So moving on to the second main point, uh, talk about the use of liability, the use of debt. All right, 借钱呢 Try to borrow money from bank. All right, to satisfy your current desire, like buying a car, a house, financing a home, getting a new fridge. So the second main point here is that debt, even though uh, it is widely used, all right, may not for it. Uh, how to say that may not be for everyone, all right? Or maybe put it simpler, right? That is not for everybody, all right? So I'm going to lay down uh, the simple logic here, right? The reason here is that firstly, debt needs to be repaid, uh, logical, right? So if you borrow money from the bank, you will need to repay, all right? Now, what uh, from what do you use, all right, to repay? Your loan, all right. You use your income, current income, future income, and the problem here is the income. That means the income that you bring in every month. Ah,、uh, not everyone enjoys the certainty of income. All right. So depending on whom you're working with, if you are in a highly volatile industry, and you find that ah,、uh, uh, your salary is not that consistent. 
not certain, not confirmed, and fluctuate based on commission structure, stuff like that. So for that one, you need to watch out because your future income may not be able to cover your current debt obligation. All right, so a recap, the first main point, talking about living below your means. Um, some people, are, um, maybe for, for lack of better terms, are rather creative in uh, trying to abuse or trying to push the living below your means equation to the maximum. So for example, you're only earning 2000 per month, but you are spending 2500 per month. So where do you get that extra 500? So what you do, you go and borrow from the bank, all right? And this is what we call as presumptuous spending habit. All right, it is presumptuous uh, because uh, such a person is assuming that he is able to repay the loan, uh, in this case, extra 500 ringgit per month to fund his or her current lifestyle uh, by using the future income. All right, everything is nice and well. If only there's someone telling us that, you know, uh, your income for the next one year is guaranteed, all right? Uh, let me know if you have uh, found any job which has a guaranteed income. Uh, they say that, yeah, you're going to have guaranteed income for the next one or three years. Uh, ring, ring me up also because I would like to have such a job too. All right, so that will conclude the main point number two. That may not be for everyone. So always be cautious when you try to use this instrument. Now, main point number three talks about save more tomorrow. Uh, it is actually a behavioral nudge proposed by Nobel winner Richard Teller from the University of Chicago. All right, so whenever people heard about the word saving, you may find that, wow, you know, saving is, yeah, sounds like a good concept, but it may not be for me. Uh, my income is already very little every month. How am I able to save? All right, but on the other hand, you realize that saving is important down the road, especially when you are aging down 40 to 50 years old, when retirement age is coming, Saving may be your last resort to save you in, in terms of funding your retirement lifestyle. Alright, so this uh, save more tomorrow concept is that uh, what we can do is that we can uh, uh, save more by using this method. Alright, the first step is you can maintain your current lifestyle. So once again, using the same example, if let's say you're earning 3000 per month and you are spending, let's say, 2500 all right? So you will have a saving of 500 quite. All right, 500 ringgit saving every month. All right, so this save more tomorrow concept is that because we realize that saving may be tough for everyone. So what you can do is that you will only increase your saving when you receive your next salary increase. All right, so for example, you know, now you're earning 3,000 and then uh, next next year, all right, uh, next year you, you receive a good news saying that you are increasing your income, let's like say to 4,000. All right, so 3,000 to 4,000, right? So, so you find that when you have more income, uh, generally humans like to, you know, expand our current lifestyle. So uh, instead of spending 2,500 last time, now I want to spend 3,500. Uh, still saving 500 quite. All right, so instead of doing that, since you already have your increase in your paycheck, 3,000 or 4,000, so maybe now is the time, all right, to increase your saving a little bit. Let's say from 500 quite to 600, right? So by doing this, uh, every time you have more money coming in, uh, you also know that you are saving more. It is actually a good feeling, all right? Uh, the kind of a concept proposed by Richard Teller, um, because it is actually involves with our own psychology when it deals with money, when it deals with delayed 
gratification. All right, so we'd like to summarize the three main points, all right, uh, referring to this lecture concerning managing your financial ammo, your financial resources as well. Main point number one, always live below your means. Proven, all right? This is a proven concept. Uh, try not to be creative, too, too creative around it, right? Just live below your means. All right, it's going to save you a lot of financial trouble down the road, right? So you guys are, are graduates, uh, just started out. And, uh, yeah, it is good, all right, to follow the proven path. Now, main point number two, that may not be for everyone, all right? Check yourself, check your own psychology when it deals with using future money. That is future money. So you might need that, like say, to buy big ticket items like cars, house, um, yeah, people can't avoid that, you know, especially house, you need 30 years mortgage, right? So when you use that, always be careful, always remember that that needs to be repaid and it needs to be repaid with your future income. So try to be extra careful and be prudent when you are using the debt. All right, the last main point is the use of the save more tomorrow concept. All right, you will maintain your current saving habit, but you will only increase your saving when it comes to next uh, increase in your salary. All right, so in conclusion, all right, so I hope that you like this lecture. To conclude, income is in many ways a financial offense. That means you are trying to push beyond your boundary. And that's why lecture two, we have the title on the 100 times your first month salary. Uh, income is actually more important than saving. Uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, all right? Income is financial offense, and sh you should put that in the highest priority, especially in your early years. All right, so with that in mind, not only you need to take care of the financial offense, but also financial defense. So this lecture, we cover things on saving, things on spending, all right? So there's always the balance and you will need to find that balance in yourself, each of you individually. All right, so can you save 50% of your paycheck? Or can you save at least 10% or 20% of your paycheck? All right. Or maybe you're someone who are already overblown, all right? Every month you are spending too much and you are borrowing money from here and there. All right. So it is good, all right, to have a self check, all right, health check, self financial check on your current financial situation. So uh, we address the working aspect, we have addressed the saving aspect. The next lecture we will address on. I think the topic which most of us are more, more uh, interested in, which is about uh, deploying your money for investing, for multiplication, right, for more return. All right, so that is the end of this speech series on personal finance. And once again, I hope that you like it. All right, uh, if you find that this series is helpful to you, uh, feel free right, to share, uh, like, and subscribe uh, this series. All right, uh, I think that's what normal, every normal YouTuber likes to say. So I'm not ashamed to beg, all right? Not ashamed to ask for you to like and subscribe this channel too. All right, so once again, thanks, thanks everyone, all right? And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.